Hello everyone, welcome to F3 Learning and today I am going to discuss about double interlock 3 axon system. So in before going to double interlock 3 axon system, let's talk about uh, in short regarding all those three types of the interlocks. In the single interlock 3 axon system, water in, enters to the sprinkler piping upon operation of a detection device only. So if a detector detects a fire, it will give a signal to the glazing panel to open the solenoid valve and allowing water to go to the sprinkler piping to the sprinkler piping, right? In the non-interlock system, the second one, the water enters to the sprinkler piping upon a detection device or automatic sprinkler activation. Any one of that, if activate, it will open the deluge valve, a uh, free action deluge valve and allowing water to go inside the system. Now, the last one, the, the, the one we are going to discuss about today, which is double interlock free action system. In double interlock free action system, water enters inside the piping upon two series. First, a detector device detects a fire and at the same time, automatic sprinkler system also fuses. If these two systems not happens together, the system will go to a free set condition if any one is uh, activated, right? Suppose, for example, if a detector uh, give a wrong signal to open the solenoid valve, it will open, but at the same time, there is no activation of the sprinkler system and hence there is no decrease in the air pressure. It will not allow to open the deluge valve and put the water inside the system. So let's uh, stick to the point double interlock system and have a look in detail. So this system are mostly applicable in, in the area where maximum protection against accidental filling of the piping with water is required. right? So the piping in this system contains pressurized air or nitrogen, similar to the dry pipe system, right? Remember in the dry pipe system, uh, once a sprinkler system activates, the nitrogen or air pressure reduced and causing the differential pressure uh, and then water enters into the piping due to uh, difference in the pressure. So uh, this one uh, work in the same way after the deluge valve as a dry pipe system. So, the main application for this one, this double interlock friction system are uh, designed for protection of freeze, freezer storage warehouse, right? Where the consequence of getting water into the piping are severe. Like, you know, let's say there is a freezer, uh, freezer storage warehouse, there is always temperature in the minus. And by mistake, if water enters inside the piping, how you are going to remove the waters, right? There is chances. How we can remove the waters from that one? There is two options only we have. The first one, increase the temperature of the freezer, a storage warehouse. That is not possible because there are lots of product and all is stored. This is the main, this is the main purpose of the warehouse, a storage for the freezer. The second one, take all the piping outside the freezer warehouse. That is also not impractical. That is also not practical. To avoid these issues, you know, we have to go with the a double interlock prediction system. It is the most advanced one and uh, it doesn't allow water to go inside the system until there is a real fire. But this, this system at the same time, you know, delay the water discharge during a real fire, right? By doing so, the fire is allowed to intensify and do more damage, right? And this system, as it, as it is a dry pipe uh, after that one, allows more sprinkler to open because of delaying the activation of the sprinklers and causing water to discharge also. Uh, causing more sprinkler to activate and to fight the fire. Because you know, we water can be repaired and restored much easier than an right, object that have been burned off, right? So this system is not uh, recommended for computer rooms, museum or art galleries, right? Because you know, this is the main, you can use that one also, there is no problem, but this is main design, mainly designed for double interlock reaction system for the freezer storage warehouses, cold storage and similar areas. So here we have a uh, general view of double interlock prediction system, right? Uh, here we have a system control bar. The yellow we can see, this is the, uh, the indicating type. It's, if it is perpendicular to the pipe, means valve is open, right? The second one we have a deluge valve. The third one we have supply side gas. Uh, from here we can see what is a gas pressure. The fourth one we have the water pressure switch. And then we have water motor uh, alarm. The sixth one we have the alarm panel, and then we have an alarm bell here. 
if you can see we have a detectors and sprinklers here right to discharge the water then we have a compressor at this location uh, then air pressure switch dehydrators air maintenance device all the way coming to this one right so we'll have a look in detail regarding all those in the general PNID schematic diagram that will be more easier to explain there so normally the water coming from this side going all the way from the team piping and from this side we have uh, one uh, one kind of one actuator here and then we have the solenoid wild wall they are going all the way combined together to this line holding it right so these two need to be activated in order to uh, uh, get the discharge of what open the deluge valve and putting the water into the system and then it will discharge from this two. So once the detector detects a fire, it gives a signal to the releasing control panels and the releasing control panel gives a signal to the solenoid valve to open. This is the one series and the second one regarding the pneumatic activation. We'll have discussed that. We'll discuss that one uh, in detail in the schematic diagram. Here we have a more clear view of this one, right? We can have a look at this one in detail. This is a water supply line. And water is going all the way from this stream, one by one quarter, one quarter inch minimum stream. The B1, we have a setup device, priming valve normally opens. The B2, we have strainer. And then we have a restriction orifice, right? The B3. Uh, 1 over 16 inch restriction office, right? This is restrict the flow of waters to the deluge valve frame chamber and then all the way to this B4 We have a spring loaded check valve going to This one, right? We can see here. It is going all the way to This one and it closed the uh, close the deluge valve, right? in normal condition now If you can see the same line is going all the way to this man this is a manual release valve right it's going to the manual release valve and to the drain connection right so if you want to open the this is a manually just open this box and pull the lever it will uh, decrease the pressure in the system and the system will activate and the water starts flowing from the deluge valve so how the system uh, activate right so let's discuss that so this is what we talk about the theme, right? And then we have at the top of the deluge valve, we have a easy riser D2, which is what is uh, easy riser check valve. And then we have a D4, uh, which is for system pressure gauge and valve, right? It is giving the system pressure. Mostly it is talking about the air pressure after the check valve. And as I said, uh, this system is activated by two series. Uh, one by actuators and at the same time it should be uh, opened by the solenoid valve. So let's talk about the solenoid valve first. This detector detected fire, the E5, sends a signal to the releasing control panel. Now this releasing control panel sends a signal to this solenoid valve to open, right? The E2, right? It says, it says okay, there is a fire and open. The solenoid valve will open, right? The water will pass from this line but it will stop at this position because here we have E1 which is a pneumatic actuator. Now this pneumatic actuator is pressurized by compressed air and those compressed air will only reduce if there is any sprinkler fuse, right? if the sprinkler system fuse and the air pressure goes down Due to that, the pressure from the water will force this actuator to open and allowing the water to go from this side, right? So, this is our compressor F1 and here we have a supervisory pressure switch uh, on and off based on the high and low pressures and then all the way going from this line to the dehydrator and we have an air maintenance device with a bypass line F8 we have to uh, Air pressure supervises the switch, right? It supervises the air pressure uh, if it is high or low, and it connected all the way to this uh, releasing control panel. It gives us uh, supervision to this releasing control panel. If the pressure is so low, it will give some supervisory signals. If it is high, also it will give a supervisory signal. Now the same line 
all the way from this one, right? If you can see, I'm going to F7 and it is connected at the top of the easy riser valve, right? And the one from the same line, if you can see the line is the same coming from the compressor, this one is connected to this actuator, right? So either the, if the sprinkler system fuse, right, let's say this is the sprinkler system we have, if this sprinkler system fuse, the air will go out. Once the air goes out, right, there will be decrease in pressure in the actuators and at the same time when the pressure decreases and already uh, solenoid valve give a signal to the actuators, the water pressure will force this actuator to open, allowing the water to discharge all the way to the drain connection, right? So this is how it works, right? Once a detector detects a fire, gives a signal to the drain control panels, it gives a signal to the solenoid valve to open, wait. Now, is it a real fire? If yes, if it is not a real fire, it will also automatically go to the reset condition because uh, the actuator is not yet activated. How it will activate? It will only activate if there is a real fire and the sprinkler system activate this one. This is sprinkler system activate and release the air pressure. Due to the release in the air pressure, right? This E1 which is the actuators, pneumatic actuator, the it will force, it will open and water will discharge from this line, right? So if a solenoid valve activates, it will only allow water going all the way from this line to here, but it will not go beyond this actuators. It will only go if the actuator actuate. Once it, it activated, the water will pass all the way from this line to the drain connection. This is how this system uh, activates, right? And here we have B10, which is a pressure operated relief valve. The purpose of this one, you know, uh, to the, the, to keep this deluge valve open, it always it, it continuously vent the priming chamber line, and it is uh, keeping it open during the during the fire condition when water is getting into the system and system is activated and fighting the fire. So. This is how double interlock cycle system works, right? So that's all about double interlock reaction system, right? Uh, so this is the last one uh, of automatic sprinkler system uh, series, right? Uh, remember, I discuss about uh, I discuss about wet pipe system, dry pipe system, deluge valve, and the last one, free action system. So now all the four. Uh, Sphincter system as for NFPA 13 is covered. The links are there in the description box. If you want to, uh, if you want to see those videos, just go to the link and click. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe so that you can get the latest update on various AP topics. So for now, take care, guys, and I see you next time. If you have any questions, you can contact me through the LinkedIn or you can follow my page on Facebook. Take care, guys. I see you next time.